Fun fact, did you know that there are unicorns in the Bible? What? Well, well only if you read the King James Version, but oh. there are other mythical beasts that make the jump to other translations. Wait, like what? Well, specifically in Job, we're introduced to two amazing creatures that a lot of people uh, have debated about what they could be. And of course, if there's something in the Bible that people get confused about, I want to cover it. True that. So today on Yes, That Is Something That Happened in the Bible, we're going to look at fantastical creatures and where to find them. Let's begin. First, I want to talk about the unicorn in the room. <laughs> so, in the Old Testament, there is this animal called Araim in Hebrew, and scholars have, have a good guess of what the animal was. They think it was some kind of wild ox, but when the Old Testament was first translated into Greek, the Greek translators didn't have a word and didn't know what to put, so they used the word monocaris which means single-horned. Then when the Latin translators came around, they looked at what the Greeks did, and they used the Latin word for one-horned, which is unicornus. And you can see how they could easily jump to unicorn when King James came around and ordered his English translation of the Bible. I do also want to say real quick, unicorn just means a creature with one horn. It wasn't till medieval times where this whole, like, horse with a horn on its forehead showed up. So we actually have unicorns still alive today. Just go ask Mr. Narwhal. Today I want to focus though on Job 40 and 41 because it's there that we meet Behemoth and Leviathan. First things first, before we get started, how you view the book of Job will kind of shape your perspective on what these creatures were. What I mean is this, if you take Job as a historically accurate factual story that really happened, then that means when you read these passages, you are trying to picture a creature that really did exist or might still exist. And if you read Job as more of a metaphor that's trying to teach us some kind of moral lesson, then you probably read these creatures as symbolic of something. Now, I'm not gonna use this video to try to prove one view of Job versus the other, but for the sake of the video, and because it's a really fun thought experiment, I'm going to view these descriptions of creatures that really did exist, or may still do. Now, out of the two creatures, first, we are introduced to Behemoth. You say now a lot. <laughs> I'm back! The first creature we're introduced to is Behemoth in Job 40. Now, we're given less details about Behemoth than Leviathan. We're told that Behemoth is a herbivore. We're told that it has some kind of really big tail. We're told that it's jacked, that it can cross rivers and bodies of water that, and it's not phased if they're like raging or anything like that. Uh, we're also told that apparently its bones are as thick as bronze. So basically, it's a tank with legs. With that description in mind, many people have put forth guesses of like what it could be. Uh, some of the popular ones are a rhino, or an elephant, or even a hippo. And those aren't actually bad guesses on the surface level because if you look at it, those animals, they do eat grass, they are basically tanks with legs. But I do have one issue with all of those guesses, and that's their tails. Because like I said before, Behemoth, we're told, has a tail that it makes as thick as a cedar. And if you look at the tails of these animals, they just don't live up to that description. Another very popular theory, and especially if you hold to young earth creation, which is the view that the earth is only about 6,000 years old, is that the book of Job is describing a dinosaur, specifically a type of sauropod, which is what these guys are in Jurassic Park. So what do I think it is? Well, before we get to that, Let's go on to amazing creature number two. So in Job 41, it's all dedicated to describing Leviathan. What we read in Job 41 is that Leviathan is some kind of water creature. Um, it's also described to have limbs, which 
means that a lot of people think it might be some giant crocodile type creature. I mean, at, on the surface it kind of looks like it. Uh, it has skin that's as thick as armor. It has uh, sh really a lot of sharp teeth. But then we get a description that might make us think that it might not just be any kind of crocodile because it tells us that there's smoke coming from its nostrils. It tells us that it can breathe fire. It's so a dragon! Yes, Leviathan is... They're real! I believe! <laughs> Leviathan is a water dragon. That's right. When you're reading the Bible, you should know there be dragons ahead. There be dragons ahead! <laughs> I mean, it makes total sense. I mean, picture what you, picture a dragon in your head and then hear how it's, how Leviathan's described. Verse 15 says that it has scales that interlink like shields so that it is armored all over its body. Verses 19 to 21 give us pretty explicit descriptions of how it breathes fire. Uh, verse 31 seems to describe it being able to breathe fire underwater because it says that it makes the sea boil like in a pot. And it knows how amazing it is because in verses 33, it tells us that it has no fear of anything. In verse 34, it gives it the title of king that is of all that is proud. Like, we all know, dragons are just prideful jerks. So that gives us a good picture of what Leviathan is. But what about Behemoth? Do I think it's an elephant or a hippo or a dinosaur? No. So after thinking about this and trying to find a real world equivalent of what it could be, I think I've discovered what it is. It's a Durambaros from the game Monster Hunter. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Shelby, there's already a monster called Behemoth in Monster Hunter. And Real quick though, let's look at what Monster Hunter calls a behemoth. I mean, look at this thing. It doesn't have thick armor. It does not look like a herbivore. And according to its description, it can cast magic spells. And if biblical behemoth could cast magic spells, I'm pretty sure the book of Job would tell us that. So when I realized this about behemoth, I was like, well, maybe Leviathan is in Monster Hunter. But unfortunately, there isn't any dragons that uh, live in water and also breathe fire. The closest you could get is maybe Lagiacarus, but it breathes lightning, not fire. And also, I'm kind of glad that Lagiacarus isn't Leviathan because it's just the worst. But thinking about Leviathan and trying to figure out where it fits in the Monster Hunter universe, I realized there's another problem that I'm missing. There's a, a problem that's existing under the surface of Behemoth and Leviathan, and that's the Hebrew animal Ra'im. Well, after looking at the scholars and seeing that they think that it was some kind of giant wild ox, I knew that I had discovered the real world equivalent for Raim as well. It's a popo. What? What? <laughs> what? What? So, of course. <laughs> so, of course, in Job, when it talks about how humans couldn't take down either of these creatures with their basic arrows and spears, it makes total sense. What the ancients should have done is used the proper equipment for hunting these types of monsters. Giant swords and giant hammers. The end. While I talk about this, I know that this is probably one of the more sillier episodes, but still three points to leave you with. First, it is really fun just to sit and think about what these creatures might have been. Second, these creatures point to the creativity and just amazing power of God. Third, next time you're on a cruise ship sailing across the sea, just remember there might be a giant water dragon swimming beneath you. Thanks for watching. If you've watched this video the whole way, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this new format. I hope you enjoyed my um, wife giving comments in the background. Sorry. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and like this video, it really helps me out. My goal for 2021 is to put out at least a couple videos every month. I mean, I'm shooting for once a week, but I also am a full-time missionary, so no guarantees. With all that said, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey, you wanna go hunt some laggy acaruses? No. Okay. That's the
most annoying. You got shock bombs. Uh, I hope you've done all the things, crafted all the stuff. 